What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now let's get into it. Gilbert Burns and Hamza Chimaev are not bothered if Conor McGregor skips the line. While they're days away from hurting each other inside of a cage for 15 minutes on Saturday night, both Gilbert Burns and Hamza Chimaev do agree on one thing. Conor McGregor has the power to do pretty much what he wants. McGregor, a former champ champ and the biggest draw in all of MMA, perhaps in all of combat sports, is recovering from a broken leg injury and is expected to step back into the cage sometime later this year. While it's unclear when exactly the Irishman will finally return to the octagon or who he will be taking on, McGregor himself has talked about potentially challenging welterweight champion Kamaru Usman. The reason? McGregor wants to become the first fighter in history to hold titles in three different weight classes. This week, during their fight week interviews, both Hamzat and Burns were asked about their thoughts on this. Both echoed the same sentiments. McGregor is a money-making machine, but he has lost three of his last four fights dating back to 2018, with his lone win being against Cowboy Cerrone in January 2020 via shoulder strikes and more. Both Hamzat and Burns would not agree with McGregor skipping the line to fight Kamaru Usman if it came to it, but if there is one person to do it, it is Conor, and they wouldn't really have much of a problem with it despite the fact that, in their eyes, Conor doesn't deserve it from a records or fight perspective. Case in point, this is what Burns said in a recent interview with The Mirror. What do you think about Hamzat and Burns' conclusion about Conor McGregor if this actually happens? Do you agree with them? Peter Yan calls out Aljamain Sterling's hypocrisy in new video. In a recent interview with Ariel Helwani, Aljamain Sterling claimed that Peter Yan was intentionally cheating when he hit him with an illegal knee strike while Sterling was down during their infamous first fight back in March of 2021 at UFC 259. The fight was ultimately halted, Yan was disqualified, and Sterling was handed the bantamweight title immediately. In the aftermath, Fans piled on Sterling for overacting and gaining the sympathies of officials to come out on top in that situation. Ultimately, however, Yan did hit Sterling with an illegal knee strike in a dangerous position, but the Russian did profusely apologize afterward. The rematch has been 13 months in the making, but it's finally here, and just days before this bantamweight title unification fight, Sterling is now accusing Yan of trying to get ahead by cheating. Now, Peter Yan is firing back as he posted a video on Twitter of Sterling hitting Yan in the back of the head while Yan's knee is down, which took place during their UFC 259 fight. The caption of the video stated this, Hypocritical Things came to a head this week when, during one of the behind the scenes embedded episodes in the lead up to the rematch, Sterling was seen walking around with a fake rule book, poking fun at Yan. Still, what do you think about these accusations, and who do you think will walk away with the bantamweight title after this one? Patty the Fatty now weighs 202 pounds, or 91.5 kg, weeks after UFC London win. Patty Pimblett loves to get loose after his fights, and this time was no different. The Liverpoolian is coming off his second straight finish in the UFC, in just his second appearance inside the octagon. Paddy finished his latest victim, Mexico's Rodrigo Cazula Vargas, by a submission in the first round at UFC London back on March 19th and earned him a performance of the night bonus. That fight took place in the 155 pound lightweight division. Paddy seems to have been enjoying his $50,000 bonus as he confirmed that he's now up to about 202 pounds, gaining just under 50 pounds in just over two weeks since that fight indulging in all kinds of foods and snacks that he shied away from during his fight camp in preparation for UFC London. In a recent video on his YouTube channel, Paddy detailed just what he's been eating, giving us a glimpse into his weight gain. This is what he stated. Got home. I had a 240 gram pack of chocolate buttons. What's like 1100 calories. And then I had two Whisper Golds, a can of Coke. Then we went that Nando's, I had we had the hummus between us. I had 10 barbecue wings to myself, a garlic bread, a rice, a chips, and half a chicken. I got home and had two of them dirty donuts. Joel's made me loads of red velvet cookies. I had two of them. And then, like, obviously, I had drinks and that. He goes on to confirm that he is indeed hovering around 200 pounds, which isn't out of the ordinary for him. After his win over Luigi Vendramini in his UFC debut late last year, Paddy ballooned up to a similar weight, posting photos on social media about the whole thing. Just this week, Logan Paul, who admittedly hovers around 220 pounds or so, 
said he'd love to have his first MMA fight against Paddy the Batty, believing that because of this weight gain, the two can actually meet in the 185 pound division. Of course, this will be further down the line, but it is interesting to see Logan take notice of Paddy's penchant for food. Still, what are your thoughts on Paddy the Batty's weight gain? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all of the latest fight news. Hamza Chimaev hopes welterweight champion watches him knock out Gilbert Burns. Welterweight champion Kamaru Usman has been providing a bit of support to his former teammate and opponent Gilbert Burns as the Brazilian gears up to take on Hamza Chimaev at UFC 273 this weekend. Kamaru and Burns know each other and were good friends while they were training together in Florida. While the two have fought in the octagon and Kamaru has moved over to Colorado to work with Trevor Whitman, the Nigerian Nightmare and Durinho still remain close friends. With UFC 273 taking place in Florida this week, Usman has been in the state to help Burns for his upcoming fight, despite the fact that if Burns wins, he could face Usman for a second time. Hamzat, however, is unfazed about Burns getting help from the champ. In fact, he relishes the idea and in typical Hamzat fashion, doubled down on his comments by saying this in a recent interview with Daniel Cormier during the DC check-in. Of course, I hope Kamaru will be there in his corner, you know, like the talk, he will help him for training camp and some shit, you know, like, I hope he will be there, you know, so I, when I knock him out, I'm going to go to him, I won't jump in, you're next, you know, so I can't beat them both same night. It's widely believed that the winner of the Hamzat Burns fight will get a first-class ticket to a welterweight title shot. Burns is only one fight removed from having already challenged for the welterweight title, a fight that he lost by a third-round finish to Usman. Meanwhile, Hamzat is carrying massive momentum into this fight as he's undefeated at 10-0 in his career, four wins in the UFC, all of them finishes inside of two rounds. He's being touted as a potential nightmare for anyone and now finds himself in a position to possibly challenge for the title in just his sixth fight if he can get past Burns this Saturday at UFC 273. What do you make of Hamzat's statements here concerning Usman? And are you on board the Hamzat hype train? Or do you think Durinho will rule the day? The UFC has officially scrapped the Marcin Tibura Jarzinho Rosenstruik fight for UFC 273 this upcoming weekend due to an undisclosed illness that has hit Marcin Tibura. The last time we saw Tibura was in October of last year when he dropped the decision to Alexander Volkov. Meanwhile, Rosenstruik was looking also to get back on track after having lost a decision to Curtis Blades back at UFC 266 in September. What do you think about the UFC scrapping this fight? Luke Rockhold is frustrated with Paulo Costa, claims he's using steroids. It's been two and a half years since former middleweight champion Luke Rockhold stepped into the octagon when he made his light heavyweight debut against Jan Blachowicz. Rockhold was moving up in weight after facing adversity in the middleweight division and a lot of trash talk with some light heavyweight fighters. For his troubles, Jan Blachowicz KO'd Rockhold in that fight in just the second round and it prompted a long break for the AKA standout. Then, earlier this year, Rockhold made waves when he announced his return to the cage and later called out one-time middleweight title challenger Paulo Costa, who remains ranked number four in the middleweight division. Rockhold, in his mind, believes that Costa is ranked high enough to propel him back into the top 10. He also believes that Costa has weak grappling, something that Rockhold excels at, which could give him an advantage. Costa did say he wanted the fight, but a bout agreement has yet to be signed. Rockhold aired out his frustrations with this in a recent interview with Ariel Helwani, in which he stated this. Within all these rules, it's like, all right, you don't want to make way, you want to make excuses, you're just a fucking bitch when it comes down to it and your steroids aren't working anymore and you fucking, you got caught up and you're looking for a way out. He's always he's always needed assistance in whatever ways, he, it's obvious. So, uh, Fucking show up, show up and show out. Let's fuck go. In a recent tweet, Costa responded to Rockhold by saying this. After this shits Luke Rockhold said, I will reveal a curiosity. Vitor is my dad and it happened when him and my young, sexy mom gets in romance on Rio de Jedi's Brazil. Now everyone knows. That's when he bring me to UFC. The staff called me Baby Vitor. There's definitely a lot of animosity here between Rockhold and Costa, as the former middleweight champion looks to finally return to the 185 pound division he once ruled. The frustration is easy to see. Costa brings up Vitor Belfort, mocking Rockhold as Vitor had knocked out Rockhold back in 2013 in the first round, 
by a spinning back heel kick and punches. Still, Costa hasn't done himself any favors by talking all the crap in the world. Costa has shown that he's had trouble making the 185 pound limit, as evidenced by his last fight last year when he missed weight against Marvin Vittori. That fight ultimately took place at 205 pounds, and Costa still lost a five round decision to Vittori pretty clearly too. That whole debacle prompted UFC President Dana White to claim that Costa will only be fighting at light heavyweight going forward, something the Brazilian and his team stated was not going to happen. Costa insists on staying at middleweight and making another run at the title. But what do you think about Rockhold's accusations here concerning Costa? Thanks so much for joining us today. What do you make of what's going on in the fight world? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest news from the MMA Zone. See you next time.